I'm a big fan of contours. No contours this year, so some people might be happy with that, others not. One of the things I'm doing here is just drawing a line, transitioning to an arc, simply by moving my mouse back to the vertex that I started from. We had a coincident relation there, and throw a couple dimensions on it. So it's a quick and easy tip, instead of having to go to the arc command and select it each time. Good tip to learn and use often. We'll revolve this shape, there's our first feature. I don't need to draw a center line in there, that's not necessary. Not necessary. I can actually just use that center line that exists. On the front plane here, actually I turned all my primary planes on. That's a new capability we added in SOLIDWORKS 16. Quick and easy way to get all your primary planes turned on and off. We'll add some dimensions. What I want to do here is I want to create a dimension from the center of the bottom sphere. Well, I can't really create that without turning on the original sketch that I created. And I'll actually create dimensions from the top of that sphere as well. So we'll add those dimensions, extrude through all in both directions. That's based the basic pocket. On the right plane, we created a similar pocket. These are more of an external uh, cutouts, if you will. Capture the silhouette edge on the left side, lower left side, so I can build that design intent into my model. We'll dimension it from the center of the top sphere, and then I'll line that uh, top line of the rectangle up to the top of my part so it stays uh, that way. I add a center line, mirror everything to the other side, and we'll extrude this as a cut through all, both directions. On the side face here, there's a hole there, 15 millimeters. You can use hole wizard, whatever. I just drew a circle and made it 15, drew that through all. Next one we're going to do is we're going to uh, add the holes at the bottom. So there's a counterbore hole on the right side and a tapped hole on the other side. So what we did here is we're just going to place a uh, M10 button head counterbore hole, and we're going to do this using by placing it onto the 3D surface. You do not need to create a plane to create that. We allow, with the hole wizard, we allow you to be able to place holes onto non-planar surfaces. I think it's really important that people understand how to do that. And in that hole, what I did is I added a long X relationship to establish that position for that. This one's just uh, placed on a planar hole, a tapped hole, placed onto the planar face, face I mean, and uh, that's going to be an M10 tapped hole. Add some fillets. I'm just choosing three faces. It, uh, captures all those uh, edges for me. I don't have to go and select edges individually. It's not necessary, but I like to add color to that fillet. That helps me visualize that, yeah, I got everything covered, and then you gotta remember to add your material. So that's phase one. So as, you come, as you're done with that, we give you a draw, a, another drawing to make a change. As I mentioned before, those uh, ledges at the top become, go from planar to cylindrical, and the ceiling at the bottom, if you will, inside of that pocket becomes spherical. When I look at this, the first thing I think of, replace face. Maybe you don't think of that, but maybe after I go through this little exercise, you'll say, next time, that's what I'll think of too. So instead of having to delete geometry or recreate geometry or add material, remove material, which might force me to have some of my other features fail or you know become dangling, I'm just gonna use the replace face option, one of our many tools that we have for direct editing. I'm going to draw in an arc, extrude that as a surface. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace a solid face with a surface face. And you can see it's just taking that face and replacing it. Use the tab to hide bodies, something we added in SOLIDWORKS 16. Helps me hide bodies quick and easy. On the bottom, I'm going to do something similar. Instead of trying to add material and cut material to get that cylindrical cut in there, I'm just going to draw in an arc. Draw a center line. In this case, we're going to revolve an arc around the center line, which gives me a sphere. And we'll use replace face. Nice little tool. Nice little tool. <coughs> Keep that one in your toolbox. Hide that uh, surface. Now we got to deal with our fillets. Well, all those faces have changed dramatically, so we got to deal with fillets. Remember, before, all I did was choose three faces, so we we'll just reselect those faces, get rid of the ones that we had there before. And there's your geometry for phase two. Next, we ask you to add or to run a simulation. Very simple simulation. We want you to uh, fix the bottom two holes, or this bottom two holes. Actually, I'm running SOLIDWORKS simulation here instead of Simulation Express. And in doing so, since SOLIDWORKS simulation allows me to simulate multiple bodies inside of a single part, I'm going to exclude those first two bodies. We'll add our constraint to those two holes at the bottom, and then we'll apply our load. I just use my sketch to define the vertical direction, 5,000 newtons, and then we run it. <coughs> In no time at all, comes back, gives me my results. I like to animate it because of what that does is it helps me understand that, yep, this is behaving as I would expect it to. And in this case, it does. And then we ask you, what is the factor of safety? 
little over five is the is the final answer, and that's uh, that's what we have for Model Mania 2016.